How are y'all doing today? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'm glad to see everybody today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Happy, um, just hope you're having a great day. It's been rainy so far. I just knocked that microphone fuzzy thing off. Got all kinds of issues here, huh? All right. Y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Good. I'd like to welcome everybody online. A lot of people are watching online today because it rained this morning, and some people don't like to get out in the rain. It's true. Amen? What do you say? Bless their hearts. A few announcements that I want to tell you guys about. Prayer. How many of you like to pray? Amen? Come show up and pray with us tomorrow night, 630. Love to have you here for that. Also, those baptism shirts, no turning back. You can see Stephanie right after church. If you would like to get one of those shirts, they're $10 each. Coming up Sunday, May 30th, be fish fry. Lord willing, it'll be down in my house as long as the grass keeps growing. And so that's at 5 o'clock on Sunday night. Men's Softball League. If you're interested in playing softball with the church this summer, please sign up. Mark it on your calendar. Saturday, June the 12th, we will be having another banner day where we hold banners over out over in the Carbondale community. Come be part of that. It's always a great day in the Lord. Also, Saturday, June 19th, breakfast together. Our men and women's breakfast that month will be pushed together. And so that would be an exciting time to have. And also, this coming Thursday will be our White Ash Food Bank. Yay! You guys are not very exciting this morning. We need your help. If you can help us, come help us. If you can be here at 6 for the early crew, come be here at 6. If you can't be here till 9, come be here at 9. There's always something to do. Amen? All right. Y'all ready to have church together? That didn't sound convincing. Stand to your feet and go Lord in prayer. Amen? We had a good 9 o'clock service. We're expecting a good 11 o'clock service and uh, anticipating what the Lord will do here amongst us. Amen? All right. I just want to go ahead and get you to go ahead and tell you. There's towels if you need one. Amen? All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for life, for health, for all your many blessings. Lord, most of all, we are thankful, God, that we can come in this room and give you the glory, the honor, and praise that you are worthy of. And so, Lord, today, we just invite your holy presence in this room. I pray, God, you meet with us in a very special, very real, very powerful way. Lord, let us know when we leave here today that we have been in the presence of the Most High God. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we all said, Amen. let's have church. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Y'all ready? All right. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing for sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. I so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge into day and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I 
shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree. That's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. Amen. May we say that. We shall not be moved. No matter what's come, what comes along, we shall be firmly planted in Jesus. This morning, we're just going to, as I told the morning service, we're just going to kind of gather around the piano and sing some praise and worship songs to the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Of Sing that through one more time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. His name is wonderful. His name, name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King. My Yes, 
bow down before him. Love and adore him. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. We have come into his house gathered in his name to worship him we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into his house and gathered forget about ourselves let's forget about ourselves magnify the Lord and worship him let's forget about ourselves and magnify the That's what you came here for today. It's just to glorify and magnify the Lord. And this song talks about there is just no better place to put your cornerstone, your rock, all your hope, than in Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He
dressed in his righteousness alone, fall the stand before the throne, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He that we can call you that cornerstone, that we can just set our feet on you, Lord, and just know that you have it all under control. And God, Lord, we just ask that you would just, if there's anybody here, Lord, that uh, that feels weak and they feel uh, just things coming against them, Lord, that they would reach out and grab a hold of that cornerstone and that they would know that they could put their trust in you and their faith in you, Lord, and that you would have them in the palm of their hands, Lord. And we just pray that you would be with each and every one in the service today, Lord. May a song touch their hearts or may uh, the word that you're going to pour into us today, Lord, speak to them, Lord. We just we just want to be receptive to whatever you have for us today, Lord, that you would open us, that you would stretch us, that you would just give us exactly what we need to go into this next week and days ahead. Lord, we love you and thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope and pray today that he is your cornerstone. Amen. He's a uh, he's my headstone. Amen. He's he's the one that uh controls it all and in charge of it all. And uh want to sing a song for you this morning. Hope that I can. I'm ready, gentlemen, anytime. Called He'll Make a Way. Looking for answers. You need a way out You've been trapped in them trials Full of sorrow and doubt You saw a trickle of sunlight But you found no escape Just hold on to His promises said that he'd make a way he'll make a way in the middle of nowhere when it seems no one really cares he's there by your side he'll make a way when you feel Satan closing Don't you give up, don't give in He'll make a way right on time Standing at the Red Sea No place to go Pharaoh's army was closing in They'd soon be overthrown. Listen to this. But right out of nowhere came a mighty strong hand. He rolled back the waters and made a way out of it. the middle of nowhere 
When it seems no one really cares He's there by your side He'll make a way When you feel safe and closing Don't you give up, don't give in He'll make a way right on time You see, that's the kind of God that I serve this morning One that will make a way no matter what He'll make a way In the middle of nowhere When it seems no one can taste He's there by your side He'll make a way When you feel safe and close in don't give up, don't give in He'll make a way right on time Don't you give up, don't give in He'll make a way right on Amen, Brother Wally. Wonderful job, brother. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I uh, I was on my way up here at nine o'clock and uh, had a great sermon worked out in Galatians chapter five, and I got about halfway uh, through the the service there, and uh, uh, God put something else in my mind. Is that okay? And so uh, I started to preach it at nine o'clock, and I'm going to preach it again at eleven. If you have your Bibles, I want you to first turn to the book of Revelation. And if you don't know where that's at, it's at the end. Amen? And so on Wednesday nights, uh, for the past six or seven weeks, I've been doing a study on the book of Revelation. And um, I've just been so blessed by it. And about, about 10 or, you know, 13 years ago today, I became pastor at White Ash. And um, about two years later, I decided, as any you know, young, bright pastor would do, I decided on Wednesday night I'd teach the book of Revelation. And frankly, I did a horrible job. And um, you got a better pastor now than you did 13 years ago. Um, and you got a better preacher and a better teacher now than you did 13 years ago. And so what I set out to do this time on the book of Revelation is I said, you know what, I'm not going to use big words because I don't understand big words. Amen? And I you know, that's why my parents named me Andrew, but they shortened it to Andy so I could spell it. Um... And so um, I, I got to talking with people. I talked to Brother Todd Griner, and I talked to Bob Davis, and, and I just, you know, I just started in, in talking to folks about Book of Revelation. And, I, and for the last six weeks, I, I think God's done a great study, and I hope those of you who have paid attention to it, you leave with a better understanding of it, because I think it's meant to be understood, and a lot of times it's frightening um, just by the mere um, language in it, and a lot of times we don't understand it. But, I, man, I, I've just, I, ever since Wednesday night, we, we, we talked on Wednesday night about the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And man, it has just stirred my heart all week long. And um, when they were singing that song, The Cornerstone, when Christ shall come with trumpet sound. And I thought, you know, we use those words so often and we talk about the trumpet that's going to sound. And I think a lot of times we don't really understand the fullness of that. And we don't believe exactly what, what it means. And I, I just want to tell you, in, in Revelation chapter 1, all right, I just want to read this before you. And I, I, I had to go back to King James. I said, Caleb, go get in my desk. And then bottom left drawer, get my King James Version Bible out. And he went. Because I like this verse in the King James. It said, and it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. The Bible says over and over and over and over and over and over again that Jesus is coming back. And I just, before we get going today, I just want to remind you of that, that Jesus is coming back. 
It's not a mystery. It's not a surprise. It's not, it's not something that we think is going to happen. It's something that we believe that's going to happen. And um, I, I listen, I, what I want you to do is I, I want you to get excited about it. Because, you know, we say, you know, the Lord's coming back. And you're like, yeah. But the Lord's coming back. Yes, Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor before we get going today. Will you stand to your feet? Now, if you're physically able, I understand. But if you are, please stand with me. I'm going to ask you to stand for four minutes, okay? I'm going to ask you to stand for four minutes, all right? Now, if your hands work, if they do work, praise God. Let's just, everybody try this. All right. Here we go. Hey, sing along if you want to. Shut my mic off, will you, Rodney? Now 
day when you shall come riding on the clouds of glory, coming to take your children home. And God, I pray today, Lord, as we look into your word, may we be reminded, God, that you are coming back again to take home your children. And we thank you, God, for that promise this morning. We rejoice in it. Let, our, let us lift our voice in jubilee that Jesus is coming back. And we are thankful, God, for that promise. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said... Amen. Thank you for participating in that. And uh, hey, he's coming back again. Amen. And I just want to talk to you today and I just want to, I, I, I don't have any notes and that's okay, but I got three things today that I want you to remember about him coming back on the clouds of glory. And it, 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 we see this take place. The Bible gives us a great description in the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation. So if you want to turn there, you can. And it begins in verse 11. And it says, Then I saw heaven opened. And a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True. For he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood. And his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven dressed in the finest of pure white linen followed him on a white horse. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with a rod, with an iron rod and he will release the fierce wrath of God the Almighty like, jo- like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe at his thigh was written this title. King of all kings and Lord of all lords. First thing I want to remind you of this morning is that Jesus is coming back. And you know, ever since I was a little guy, I heard this preach that Jesus was coming back. And I want you to know that it still rings true today. I heard my grandfather preach it. I heard his grandfather preach it. I heard my uncle preach it. All throughout uh, every pastor I've had has preached that Jesus is coming back. And I'm glad today that I can still preach that word because it's still true that Jesus is coming back. And it may seem like a far off uh, unreality, but I want to tell you it's closer now than it's ever been. And when you begin to look at the things of this world, you begin to, you, you cannot walk back through life and not see the signs of the times that ever before there is becoming a hatred of the things of God. That we're beginning to see revelation pour out before our very eyes. That in this world there's an absence of truth. Death seems to reign everywhere you look. It, it seems that there's these untides of, of unholiness and, and people are seeking to please themselves rather than the things of God. And I just want, before we ever get going today, the first thing I want you to leave here with is that Jesus is coming back. And because He's coming back, it's important that you do business with Christ. Amen? See, the Bible doesn't say that He's coming on a donkey to bring peace. This time, the Bible says He's on a white horse and He's coming to rage a righteous war. He's coming to bring justice to those who have rejected Him, to those who have failed to receive Him. He's going to come and put Satan in his place where he needs to go. And the Bible says that He is going to come with fire in His eyes. The Bible says that He is going to do a work here on this earth. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, it says that every eye will see Him. Throughout history, every eye that has ever lived, I believe, will see Christ ascend from the clouds of glory. And I want you to know it's nothing you can hide from. You can't hide in your basement. You can't buy your way out of it with your bank account. Your name won't get you out of it. But it's important that you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I don't mean that you showed up to church once. I don't care what your grandma or grandpa did. I care what you did and if you did business with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus ain't going to come back and ask about your mom and dad. He ain't going to come back and ask about your grandma and grandpa. He ain't going to come back and ask for your church attendance. He ain't going to come back and ask for your baptism certificate. He's going to come back and ask if you've had a relationship with Him. And the Bible says that you need to have a relationship relationship with Christ. Jesus himself said, many who call me Lord, Lord, I will say depart from me, you worker of iniquity, because I never knew you. And I want you to know that it's important that you do business with Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. People say, well, I'm going to get right with God down the road. Stop it. You don't want to get right with God right now. You probably ain't wanting to get right at all. 
Amen? It's time to do business with God. You say, well, I've got to get some things straightened out in my life. You come to Christ and He can straighten the things out in your life. And I want you to know, the world's selling you a book of lies, but Jesus Christ is telling you the truth. And the Bible says that He's coming back again. Now this time, I, I want you to know, when He comes back, it's not going to be like we, we, we make it out to be. All right? Um, Caleb and Jack. Caleb, Jack, stand up. You don't have to come out here. Just stand up. Jack, this is, man. Jack, he, he has this incredible knowledge of superheroes. All right? How many of you know about superheroes? Jack, who's your favorite superhero? The Flash. Got that because, you know, his dad's fast. And you can sit down, Jack. And so a few years ago, Jack, he wanted me, he, he loves these superhero movies. And, and, and Stephanie would take the boys to see. You guys know about this MCU universe? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, if you don't, I'm going to educate you this morning. And so like the past 15 years, there's been these movies put out about these superheroes, and they all tied together, all right? And they all talk to one another. And there's this group of them, when they're brought together, they're called the Avengers. How many of you ever heard of the Avengers? And so a few years ago, they were at the kind of the climax of the movie, and there was this movie called The Infinity War. And Stephanie had been taking the boys to see these movies. And I thought, well, I'll go with you guys, you know. And so I'm not a big movie goer because if you get me to sit down for three and a half hours, you've done something. I'm usually going to go to sleep. And so and my grandpa, you know, he'd be rolling over dead right now, rolling over if he knew the preacher was going to the movie theater. But anyway, beside the point. And so we go over to Harrisburg to that movie theater. And man, it's packed out. You remember back when everybody could be in a room together. And um, Anyway, we get in there and we sit down and Jack and then, man, they're, they're ready for this movie. And man, three and a half hours takes place. And at the end of that movie, there's this super villain and his name is Thanos. And Thanos snaps his fingers and half the world is destroyed. And half the superheroes that Jack, for the previous ten years, have been watching die in a moment's notice. And I look over at Stephanie, and Caleb, and Jack, and all of them have tears in their eyes. And I'm like... I'm ready to get out of here as well, you know? Um, and I was like, what, what, what's going on? And they're like, they just died. What just happened? They're like, all of them died. And I was like, they didn't die. I was like, all they did was sell a bunch more tickets for the next movie. Which I was right. And um, then the end came, and it was this climactic event called um, in, um, 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 Endgame, thank you. And, and there was this huge battle with almost all these superheroes of the world. And there was this side of good and the side of evil. Of course, you know, I've spent three and a half hours now. I've got to check out this next four-hour flick. And so we go to the movies, and, and then you get to the final thing. And, and then everybody, everybody in that, video, in that room is in their, their, they're on the edge of their seat. And they're wanting to know who's going to win. And, and man, everything's going back and forth. And, and even I looked over at Jack, because if you, you, know, you watch your child, and Jack's sitting on his edge of his seat, and Caleb, and, and man, they're all there. And man, you're, you're hoping that your superheroes will win, that the good guys will win. I mean, you're pulling for them deep, right? But these guys killed half of them last time. There's no telling what they're going to do this time. When Jesus comes back, there's no competition. You're not going to have to wonder if he's going to win. The Bible says he's going to kill them with his very tongue. <laughs> He speaks and they die, all right? It's not going to be, oh, I hope Christ wins. He's going to win. I've read the that last verse of the Bible. I know what happens. And I want you to know something. It's important now to do business with God because if you think there's a chance, then you're wrong. And I want you to know there's a day coming when justice and mercy and grace, that door's going to slam shut for the final time. And you're either going to be under the umbrella of grace or you're going to be standing outside of it. And I want you to take this opportunity this morning and examine your life. And you ask the question, Lord, thank you for your mercy and grace that you're offering it to me today, that I might receive it, that I might have a reception of the grace of Jesus Christ because, friends, there's a day coming when the door will slam shut. It's important to do business with God today. Why? Because He's coming back again. Second reason why you should recognize that He's coming back again and you should be stirred about it. Because <laughs> because you got loved ones who are going to face the wrath of God. Well, what is this wrath of God? Let's just read about it here. In verse 17 it says, Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures 
flying high in the sky. Do you know what vultures do? They eat dead things. When I hunt and I can't find something that I've shot, the next day I go back, do you know what I look for? Vultures. Because where there's vultures, there's death. The angel stands out and he cries to the vultures of the sky. Come and gather for the feast that God has given you. It says, come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and strong warriors, of horses and other riders, and all of humanity, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown down alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of one riding the white horse, and the vultures all gorged themselves on dead bodies. Jesus is coming back again. And not to bring peace, to bring just war upon those who have rejected Him. Upon those who have turned their back on Him. To take an end to Satan for the final time. And I'm going to tell you, you need to start praying for some boldness to reach out to those people who are around you. And you remind them that Christ is coming back on a white horse from the clouds of heaven. Because I'm going to tell you, if there's ever a word that needs to be preached, it's that word. If there ever is a word that needs to be preached to our sons and daughters, our husbands and wives, our moms and dads, our brothers and sisters, our friends, our cousins, our co-workers, our acquaintances, it's, it's that Jesus is coming back. We don't need to spend time talking about politics. I don't need you to spend time talking about sports. I don't need you to talk about all the useless things of this world that are going to be cast away and ignore the greatest topic of the land, and that is that Jesus is coming back again. We need to pray for boldness. We need to pray that we would share our faith with others. Why in the world would we have this great gift that God has given it and we refuse to tell others about it? Why in the world do we know and love these people that are standing around us, but we won't have enough boldness, enough courage to breach the subject? Hey, how are things between you and God? Did you know that Christ, according to my preacher and according to what he read in the Word of God, that one day the skies are going to open up and Jesus is going to come? Come back on a white horse with fire in his eyes and a robe dipped with blood and he's going to take home all those who have received him and he's going to judge all those who have rejected him. Ooh, talking about doing some eating at the dinner table then, amen? You say, Pastor Andy, I might lose friends. You might gain some real friends. Could you imagine if you didn't know Christ and somebody was withholding that information from you? The greatest thing that ever happened to me was Jesus Christ. Share your faith. Share your faith. If you don't know how to share your faith, come see me. Todd did a great study, two-week study. We're about to do some more. Learn to share your faith. Please learn to share your faith. You say, well, that's your job. No, it's not. It's everybody in this room's job to share our faith. Quit being afraid of having the conversation. Share your faith. Time is nigh. Time is running out. Share your faith. Talk to your kids about it. Talk to your grandkids about it. Talk to your husbands, your wives, your moms, your dads, your uncles, your aunts, your cousins, your friends. Talk to people about Christ. He's coming back again. So, first of all, we need to make sure we're doing business. Second of all, we need to do business with those around us. And thirdly, (laughs) I I, I can't help but remind you of this. Jesus is coming back. Be encouraged by these words. Amen? It's what we've waited for. See, culture's taught us this fake mentality. See, we worry about, you know, between the ages of 62 and about 80. Will we have enough money to retire, travel, and do all the things that we want to do? Will Social Security still be there? See, we worry about these golden years and there's not a lot of worry about those years behind it. But I'm going to tell you something. The years behind it are a lot more than those golden years. And I want you to know that your retirement is not based here. It's based there. 
And the things that God has for His people, we can't even fathom the goodness of them. The Bible says, I hath not seen and ear hath not heard what God had laid up for His children in heaven. And I know there are some of you in this room, you have suffered through some of the awful things that we can imagine. You suffered real loss. You suffered death. You suffered pain. You have suffered sorrow. You have seen the grief of this old world. And I just want to remind you that Jesus is coming back again. And you say, well, I know that. You've said that over and over and over again. You sound like a broken record, Andy. I know, but let me tell you what it brings. <laughs> See, if you flip the page to Revelation chapter 21, it talks about what happens, but what we receive when Christ comes back. And you just tell me, you just tell me if these things seem good to you, okay? If they do, you might say Amen. If you, if you like them, if you feel up to it, I don't want to get you too unbaptist. You might want to clap. But let's just read. It says, Then I saw a new heaven. This is Revelation 21. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. You know, before we go any further, I got to thinking, is the church ready to meet Christ? See, we could all sit here and say, yeah, but the truth is, are we really dressed like we need to be dressed when Christ comes back? You know, I do a lot of weddings. I've done over 100 weddings in 13 years. I've done a lot. Weddings, funerals, whatever you want to call them. Um, that's a joke, just kidding. But anyway, I always stand about right here, Okay. And they move the pulpit and they have arbors and they have little flowers and men stand on this side, the women stand on this side and the, the bride's family's here and the groom's family's here and it's always a neat experience. And um, you know, when I, when, I, when I got married, me and Stephanie, we got, we're going to be married 20 years this July. Wow, we have aged well. And um, in those 20 years, I, I, I don't remember much about our wedding but there's one thing I will never forget about our wedding. is I, I remember, I don't have to have a picture of it. I remember when my wife walked through the door and walked up that aisle. I remember how beautiful she looked. I remember everything about her. I remember her dress. I remember the smile that she had. I remember her angelic eyes. I, I remember, I was like, man. And I said, to, I would just remember in that moment, I thank God, thank you for my good thing. Because the Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And I, listen, I, I, I'll never forget it. For, for the rest of my life, I'll remember Stephanie in First Free Will Baptist Church at Park Hills, Missouri. I'll remember her walking down that aisle. I don't remember what all we said that day. I, I don't remember all the songs. I don't remember the cake. But I remember that girl walking down that aisle. And I'm telling you, she was dressed to the nines. She, and she just look, gets better every year. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if she came out that day and she did, her face was all dirty, her dress was torn. She didn't do her hair. What do you think that'd be like? Girl, did you not know what you're coming to? When I, when I marry people, I always whisper over to the groom and I say, when, when they open those doors, I say, hey, you'll, want, you'll only remember this. I say, take a good look. This is a moment you'll never forget. Every groom I whisper that to. Don't, don't forget. And man, I watch those guys. And they'll watch their good thing walking down the aisle. And man, these guys who don't even cry, you know, they're kind of holding it back. And they're, because they're amazed by how beautiful the bride is. I wonder if Jesus came back right now, what he would think about his bride. I wonder what he'd think about his bride. And I'm going to tell you, the church of Jesus Christ, we need to start adorning ourselves with the righteousness of Christ that when he does come back on a cloud of, uh, on a cloud of glory, that we're ready to meet Him. Because He isn't coming back for some bride who's dirty and dress is torn. He's coming back for His good thing. And I want you to know that it's up to us to be the good thing, that we would seek the righteousness of Christ in our lives. But as I said, He's coming back. And this is not something that we should be worried about. If you know Christ, yes! Because, see, this doesn't, it goes on to tell us what he's going to do, what, what's going to happen. And this, man, you can't get better than this. I just, like I said, if, if you get excited about it, go ahead and say amen. I, I don't want to force you to say amen. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, 
God's home is now among His people. He will live with them and they will be His people. God Himself will be with them. Oh, this is the good stuff, man, right here. Sue, hold on, sis. Amen. He will wipe every tear from their eye. How many ever cried over a lost loved one? Amen. How many ever cried yourself to sleep at night? How many of you ever in the middle of the day, man, you were overwhelmed and you just couldn't go on? How many of you are set driving your car, sitting in a stoplight, and you got to thinking about somebody who ain't here or something that's going on in your life, and those tears just overwhelmed you? Amen. But you know what the Bible says? That God's going to wipe every tear from our eyes. Amen. It doesn't stop there, though. He says, There will be no more death. <laughs> Darren Pyle, you're going out of business, son. Mitchell Hughes, close the doors. Amen. Hey, if you've lost somebody close to you, then you really know the grips of death. And for there to be able to say, there will be no more death. Yes! Because the Bible, listen, the very first thing that we were forced with is when, when Eve was disob Adam and Eve were disobedient to God, death entered into the world. Satan, do you remember the question he asked? Surely you won't die. But death has been this plague upon us. And Jesus said, no more death. Yes! Okay, just me? Amen? All right. You'll catch on in a minute. And He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death. No more sorrow. How many of you have ever grieved? I mean, just grieve and anguish. Sorrow. How many of you have realized where you felt God and how we didn't add up? How many of you have ever done something that you shouldn't have done and you know, you know that brokenness that you experience? No more sorrow. No more sorrow, crying. No more pain. No more pain. Hey, no more cancer. <laughs> no, no more pain. No more medicine. Hey, call them hospitals and shut them down. <laughs> Amen? Hey, no more doctors. No, no more worries. Amen? He's going to take everything that was begrudgingly, everything where we failed, all the, the, the unjustness that we brought upon ourselves, and He's going to save us from it, and He's going to remove it through His death, burial, and resurrection, and His coming back again. See? No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more tears. Oh, look, look, look. We can go on. It says, All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne says this. He says, Look. He says, I'm making everything new. <laughs> Woo! Come on, somebody. And then he said to me, Write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. He said, It is finished. <laughs> He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. That's what God has in store for you, for those who believe in Christ. So when we say Jesus is coming back again, let's be, Jesus is coming back again. And He's bringing life with Him. And I, I just want you to understand the fullness of the day that today is the day that we do business with Him. Don't put it off. Go to those who are around you. You have a, 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 a vicinity, a circumstance, an environment, and God is wanting you to saturate and to plant the seeds of Christ in their lives. Don't you be afraid to do it. And when you get discouraged, when you get beaten down, when you don't think you can go on, when those tears overwhelm you, when you can't sleep at night, when you don't think you can take another step forward, you remind yourself of the good news that Jesus is coming back again. And there will be a day when there's no more worries, no more fears, no more tears, no more heartaches, no more troubles, no more sorrows, and all things will be made new. Behold, He is coming on the clouds. Every eye will see Him. 
Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Is I'm going to have you stand. Go ahead, stand. Now listen. Hopefully and prayerfully, this will mean more to you now. Amen? But I, I want to challenge you today. As we're singing this song, you just come, if, you got an, if you're not where you need to be with Jesus Christ today, don't you, you don't wait. Today's your day. Amen? Yeah. I mean, why in the world, knowing what you know now, would you want to wait? Right? You say, well, you don't understand what I've done. Listen, there's nothing that you've done that Christ cannot forgive. Period. I, I, I've read the whole book. Secondly, you say, well, I keep struggling. He can answer your struggles. Well, you don't understand. I'm covered up with burdens. Listen, you may be burdened the rest of your time here on this earth. The Bible says that this earth is full of days and full of trouble. Job said the man who was born of a woman is few days and full of trouble. You're going to have heartache and despair, but your best life is not here. Olstein lied. Your best life is there. And I'm going to tell you something. God has a plan for you when you embrace Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, behold, He comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. Come on, hit it. Hey, put your, put your hands together. You feel like you have a burden today, you have a need today, you come. Today's your day. Hey, i got a towel for you too, by the way. Amen? Come on.
Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for who You are and what You are and what You've done. Jesus, we look forward today to You coming back again. God, we know Your Word says, Behold, You come riding on the clouds. And Lord, God, until that day, God, may we honor You with our lives, our words, our deeds, our actions. God, if there be anyone under the sound of my voice this hour that does not know You, that isn't where they need to be with You, I pray, God, through the power of Your Holy Spirit today, You would draw them to You. God, I pray for that most wanted list that we have in our hearts. God, those who we want to to have a knowing relationship with You. God, those spouses, those sons and daughters, those brothers and sisters, those aunts and uncles, those cousins, those neighbors, those acquaintances. God, I pray that You would burden us this hour. Please, God. God, that we might have the boldness to share our faith. That we might utter those words, Friend, do you know that He's coming back again? Do you know that He's coming on the clouds of glory? And Lord... I pray, dear God, Lord, that we would take comfort in those words today. That, God, this is not all there is. That this death and this sorrow, the struggles, the burdens, that, God, it's for the present. It's not for the future. And, God, I pray, Lord, that each day we could keep on keeping on. Knowing that that I hath not seen and ear hath not heard what you have laid up for your children in heaven. God, I'm thankful for my inheritance and that it's in You. God, that it's not down here where moth and rust can destroy, but it's laid up, God, in a place, God, that You've prepared for those who love You. (laughs) And so, Lord, today, God, we just thank You. We thank You for that sweet, sweet promise. In Jesus' name. Darren, give us one verse or something. I'm going to tell you, if there, I feel like there may be a need here today. Just give us one verse. And I'm telling you, if you got a need, if you ain't where you need to be with God today, you got somebody you need to pray for, maybe you're overwhelmed with struggle or burden, you come. Right now, you come. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever, and forever. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promise. 
What a day, glorious day that will be. Heavenly Father, we thank You, thank You, thank You, God, for Your wonderful Word this morning. God, thank You for the wonderful promise and that truth that You are coming back again. I pray, God, that You wouldn't find a bride who's unready. But I pray, God, that we would prepare ourselves and we would adorn ourselves in white. I pray, God, Lord, that we would get the transgressions out of our life. We would seek You in obedience and willfully, God, honor You in all things. Lord, thank You for preparing a place for us. Be with us now in Jesus' name. And we all said... God bless you all. You're dismissed today. Amen.